Hey everybody, welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and on today's episode, I want to talk about how I grew my podcast to almost 40,000 downloads a month in about two and a half years. I know I've gotten a lot of questions from other podcasters that I've talked to, as well as people in the audience who have sent me DMs on Instagram that were just curious to know how I did it and what my secrets are and any advice that I have for them as well. So honestly, this is the answer that I give to everyone. I'm still shocked sometimes at the numbers of downloads that I'm getting, and it's been kind of a stab in the dark. I always preach taking action, massive action, less dreaming, more doing, and that's exactly what I did. I just put it on LinkedIn one day and on social media, on my Facebook, that I'm going to start a podcast. This is episode one. Please check it out. I'm going to be releasing a podcast once a week. And here we are two and a half years later and I'm still doing that. And I've actually even stepped it up to two episodes a week now, one on Monday release and one on Thursday release. So I've started to put out even more content and I think that's the most important thing is that I've stayed consistent. Another thing that I believe has helped, and this is just a hunch, is that naming my podcast something kind of generic like Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. If anyone Googles Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast or Podcasts, mine's like the top spot, if not one of the top podcasts that come up. So I have a feeling that I'm getting some good search engine optimization or SEO organic traffic from that as well. More strategies that I've tried recently for growing my podcast on top of upping it from one a week to two a week is to do more interviews, have more podcast swaps where I'm on other shows, other people are on my shows. That helps me tap into other people's audiences so that if I'm on a podcast and then that person's audience loves my message and how I share my information, they'll come over and they'll listen to my stuff and vice versa. My people will go listen to their stuff as well if they found value in that episode and in that topic. One tip I could say is obviously pick a niche. If you've got an audience, if you want to talk about wholesaling real estate or get really, really specific or like underwater basket weaving, make your topic about that, name your episode about that, stick to that episode content, interview other people in that space and really become the subject matter expert. That's been one of the things that's been a blessing and a curse for me because I'm so generic right now that I can cover any topics in entrepreneurship and I never really run out of content. I can go from mindset to productivity to like sales techniques to Facebook ads. But on the downside is that I have a lot of people who come into my audience, come into my my email list, and then I'm not really sure how to speak to them or what exactly it is that they're looking for because they might have found the five productivity hacks I recommend freebie as cool, They might not want to hear about my every single episode that comes out and they'll unsubscribe from my list because the value is unclear of like what I'm providing and I'm still figuring that out myself, to be honest. So tips for coming up with content. Uh, This is something that you kind of just learn with as you go and you practice and you'll get better over time. But when I first started coming up with content, it was very difficult. I would type out a blog post it would be one or two pages long and I would literally I wouldn't even record the video at first I would just record the audio and I would read the blog notes that I typed out word for word off the screen so I'd literally be reading and it would be like on today's episode we're going to be talking about how to increase your productivity and that's what made it monotone a little bit it's a little hard I've gotten better at not being monotone over time and over practice But at the beginning, it was way more difficult to be excited and have energy if I was reading off of the paper. So right now, I've got no notes or anything. I'm kind of glancing down at my laptop here because my camera is connected to it. And I can see, make sure that the camera still looks okay and that I'm talking and I'm centered and all that stuff. But in any case, that's all things that I've learned over time. I don't have a very fancy setup. It's just my little office here. I've got the cool vision board on the board. I've got some books behind me. My desk is a little messy. I've got to clean it up, honestly. And I just sit here, turn the camera on, turn the microphone on, use Logitech webcam software to record a video, drop that into Adobe Premiere. I'm paying $20 a month for that. But the webcam is like 100 bucks. The podcast mic's maybe like 200 bucks. And the software comes with the webcam. I'm just recording directly in there. I drop the video into Adobe Premiere, which I'm now paying $20 a month for, and it's super worth it because before I was using some free tools and it would have a little thing at the beginning if I converted the MP3. 
it'd be like created with a free version of blah 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 and it would just annoy me and i'd have to trim and do a couple extra steps so right now i'm at that point where yeah 20 bucks a month for that software is totally worth it and then i use libsyn l-i-b-s-y-n.com for my hosting right now and there's a five dollar a month plan you can get started with but for the amount of content in the length of my episodes now i need a little bit more so i'm paying 15 bucks a month and that gives me enough space to do about four one hour podcasts a month i believe if i if i remember correctly but since i'm doing two a week i may have i may have even more capacity than that i'm not really sure what the numbers boil down to but i can put out hours of content a week whereas before I could probably do four 15 minute episodes a month and then I would run out of space. So if I had a long episode, it wouldn't let me upload it because I only get a certain amount. And I think I forgot to mention that over time, obviously you get better, you continue to practice, your speaking improves. When it comes to creating content, all I do is brainstorm a topic that I wanna talk about and I might do a little bit of research and pull a couple bullet points or something from websites but then I just talk about it and, and my thoughts about it and what I've learned about it. Maybe I'll interview someone who's a subject matter expert on it so that I can leverage their knowledge and their information instead of me having to do all the research and come up with all the citations and stuff. I can just have them talk about it and they're the expert. And when it comes to interviewing people, my first few interviews, I went above and beyond. I typed out like 10 or 15 questions. I sent it to them. I was like, we'll talk about these. Half the time you don't even ever get to all those questions because to talk about 10 or 15 things, it's going to take a long time. And usually these episodes are about 40 minutes or an hour long when you're talking to somebody. So my personal preference, I'll, I'll talk to them at the beginning and say, hey, is there a topic you want to talk about in particular? Or do you just kind of want to cover your whole story? And I think most of mine lately have been tending to be talking about like a story, but also focusing on a certain thing. And so that's cool because then we can just, I'll just continue to bring it back to that main focus and I'll make sure that we get that thing, we deliver on whatever it is that we say we're going to talk about by the end of the podcast. So if you guys remember many of my episodes, I'll it's kind of cool to be the podcaster because you can be a little selfish and leverage that person to ask questions that you want to learn for yourself. So a few episodes ago, I interviewed Melissa Dunnings, and she's a business owner in Houston. She owns a business called Composition ID. And she told me, I believe she mentioned in the episode that right now she's working three hours in the office a week, but I think she meant to say a day because she talked about she does two hour, two one and a half hour work sprints where she spends an hour and a half head to the grindstone, focusing on what matters, getting the work done. And she'll do two of those sessions a day and then the rest of her day is open to do whatever she wants and like focus on other things. And it made me reevaluate. So I thought, okay, obviously we hear grind, hustle, put in 14, 16 hour days if you have to sometimes. But then you think about the lifestyle freedom and the lifestyle that people can create. And then it makes you reevaluate like, hey, how do I make it where I only need to work three hours a day in my business and everything else runs on its own? Because once you can get a business to that level where it's running kind of on autopilot without you, then you can start to explore another business opportunity or a side hustle or spend more time on a hobby that you enjoy, things like that, versus feeling like time away from your business or your goals is time wasted because we kind of need that regeneration time to do the things that we think are fun and we don't always have to be on. That That's the hardest thing for me too. I'm working on it like when I'm off. I'll see the phone ring. I know it's a potential opportunity, but if I'm sitting there getting dinner with my girlfriend or like visiting my family over the weekend, I let it go to voicemail because you've got to draw that fine line for yourself. Otherwise, that's how people end up in bad relationships or divorced and drifting apart. I'm, I'm just thinking how, how that happens is like if there's no fine line between personal life and business, then, you know, things start to get, you start to prioritize different things and like things that, are supposed to be important to you end up on the back burner so my tips for interviewing and for podcasting in general just kind of find your voice aaron do he has a podcast we just talked recently too he has a podcast called find your voice and i loved that because it, i found my voice through my podcast over the last two and a half years of podcasting i've created and started to develop a voice and i think i've found a very good voice and of course your voice changes over time. I wasn't always like this. I couldn't always speak so eloquently and 
using tonality where I do the ups and downs and the sing songy thing of like, how are you guys doing today? I used to be like, hey, how are you guys doing today? Instead of, hey, how's it going? Like the sing songy ups and downs, you start to practice and get better at speaking over time and then listening back to your podcasts, watching the videos if you took one. That helps give you more feedback on what do I need to do? Can I improve my hand gestures? Can I can I increase my tonality or speak better or more clearly into the microphone? Or did the audio quality come out poorly? What what did I use on the mic? Did I not have my gear properly set up? Was the program that I used laggy? Did it crash on me and cut off my interview? Those are things that you just figure out over time. Um, so we talked about growing a podcast, staying consistent, naming it something that makes sense to your audience, getting on it other episodes, doing podcast swaps to help grow your audiences by sharing your message on someone else's platform and having them share theirs on yours. When it comes to interviewing people, you can come up with a couple bullet points or questions that you want to talk about. I typically say, hey, is there something you want to talk about? Or can we just talk about your whole story? What do you prefer? And they'll usually say, hey, let's talk about this topic or let's just be conversational and see where it goes. And either one of those things is fine. I just make sure to be cognizant about the time that I'm spending because that's another decision you probably want to make. Do you want to keep your podcast to 30-minute episodes and be strict about that? Or are you open to doing a 20-minute episode one week and then a one-hour interview the next week? That's kind of where I'm leaning towards right now. And you'll find that people will listen. If people like your voice and they like your content and they like your message, then they're going to listen to you whether you have a 10-minute episode one week, a one-hour episode the next week, or a two-hour episode. And you can listen to it in bite-sized chunks. And the best part is that podcasts are completely free. So the worst that can happen is someone skips yours or they go to the next episode or they fast forward 30 seconds if they think whatever you're talking about isn't relevant to them. And I guess the worst thing that could happen, they could leave you a one-star review. The best thing that could happen, they could leave you a five-star review. They could become a raving fan of you, a potential client, a potential friend, they could reach out. I connect with many people in my audience and I follow them back and I keep in touch with them and I'm impressed to see their growth over time. And we just communicate and they'll say, hey, I just listened to that most recent episode. They'll tag me in a story. I reply. It starts a conversation. And it's a very cool thing that happens when you start to connect and engage with people in your audience and even other podcasters. I've been able to leverage this platform to basically get a meeting or a conversation with most people that I want. I mean, I've, I try to reach out to Grant Cardone or someone on his team. I know he's pretty high level, but most people, they want to get on podcasts. So if I were to reach out and say, hey, I've got a podcast that's getting about 40,000 monthly downloads, would so-and-so be able to come on the show? Can we schedule something? Send them a booking link. I bet nine times out of 10, they're probably going to book a time. They're just it's in their best interest. Why would they not want to share their message with more people who could potentially become fans of theirs or even paying customers for products or courses that they have to sell right now? So with that being said, if you guys are trying to start a podcast, then uh, reach out if you have any questions. I think I covered a lot of the basics here. Remember though, YouTube's a great resource. There's so many good videos. You just have to take the time to sit down, watch a couple of them, and then implement. Don't just watch 50 videos. Watch two, take action, um, and get started on that path and then take the next steps and then just go from there. For those who want to get my gear or see what my setup is, I'll put all of the links to that to get them on Amazon in the description of this podcast or video if you're watching on YouTube. Please, please, please make sure if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell thing. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever, go and leave me a review. I'd love to see your feedback. Be honest. I mean, five stars is awesome, but if you think it's a four, that's cool. And just let me know why. Well, how can I improve? How can I make this better? I really, really, really want to know so I can continue to improve this for you all. And also just so I can level up myself. So hope you all are doing well. Wanted to give a quick note. I know things are a little crazy out there with the whole coronavirus and the global, uh, global people freaking out and toilet paper running out and stuff. So just pay attention to where you get your news from. Make sure that you're looking at credible sources and statistics and facts, not just the fear mongering and the opinions and the things that people post on social media and stuff sometimes, because it's important, I think, to make sure that you've got your facts straight and obviously exercise caution. 
make sure to read up on like, okay, wash your hands, don't go to these places in public, try to minimize your social interaction and play your part just to make sure that healthcare systems and stuff are, aren't overwhelmed and that you're not the cause of a, an elderly person or a person with a weaker immune system in your life getting sick and potentially uh, losing their life due to this virus going around. But that's just my two cents. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory. I don't know. There's claims of people having manufactured this as a weapon, a weaponized virus or all kinds of things. And it's crazy with the media and stuff today. You never really know what's true and what's not and what's overhyped and what's actually there to be afraid of. And that's kind of one annoying thing is like the boy who cried wolf, right? I, I never know when to believe like, is this super severe or is it not? And I guess uh, time will tell with this thing, just like with anything else, we'll find out. Um, and hopefully it's not too late, right? Hopefully we find out the right moves because I value my health. I want to make sure that I'm in the best shape. I don't want to have any sicknesses or things that could affect me permanently if I can prevent it, right? So I just want to make sure to do what I can um, with the best information that I have available to me to take care of my family, my friends, and just let people know kind of what I'm doing with what I've learned. And I think I shared all that stuff with my morning routines, my meditation, um, green drinks that I drink, like a little green spinach and stuff in the morning. I'm constantly learning more and trying to get better with my health and with what it is that I'm doing in my life. So with that being said, hope you all enjoy this episode and I will talk to you on the next episode of the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast.